Welcome to this video in which we introduce the concept of RMS or effective voltages and currents. Um, the idea behind RMS voltages and currents are that they allow you to do computations that involve power using formulas that you're familiar with, with from DC steady state analysis. And it's an easy way of characterizing a voltage or a current waveform in terms of the power that it delivers, the average power. So to illustrate um, the idea of uh, how RMS uh, voltages and currents work, I've uh, put together just a circuit, uh, whatever is over here, doesn't really matter, but uh, as part of this circuit we have a resistor that has a particular voltage which could be a time varying across it and then the current going through it and of course these are related by Ohm's law and then I've uh, plotted possible voltages say we might have a sinusoid in which case we might be doing AC steady state analysis or we might have a square wave and the idea in any case is we want to characterize the average power dissipated by the resistor. Okay, now um, we can uh, do this by first computing the instantaneous power. So at any point in time the instantaneous power will be the voltage times the current and because we're dealing with the resistor, I can also write this as the resistance times the current squared or as the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Okay, So the idea is that we have um, the instantaneous power is given by something that looks like this. Uh, it's proportional to the voltage squared or the current squared. So if we for example, look at this term, the voltage squared, and uh, uh, see what it would look like on our graphs. If we take the voltage that looks like this and square it, we will get something that looks like this. It's a sinusoid, but it turns out to have twice the frequency of the original sinusoid. And it looks something like this. Okay, so that means that the instantaneous power, if I have a sinusoid, would be proportional to this voltage squared, so this would be V squared of T, um, so it would be proportional to this voltage squared uh, wave, which uh, basically has twice the frequency of the original. If I'm looking at a square wave, like I've drawn here, then when I square it, I get something that looks like this. So when it's non-zero, it's whatever the magnitude squared of the wave is, and when it's zero, it's still zero. Okay, so the idea there is that we can, again, we can square the instantaneous voltage, or we could do the same thing with the instantaneous current. Now, the average power well, here, let's actually use a different color. Well, let's do average power in red. Okay, the average power is going to be the average of these waveforms that I've drawn in green. The average of the squared vo voltage divided by R, or it could be the average of a squared current uh, multiplied by R. So the average power in this case, you can see, is going to be something that looks like that. Uh, the average power in the second case, depending on the width of the rectangles and their height, uh, could be something maybe that looks like that. Okay, to get the average power um, in this first case, uh, basically what I can do is I can go over one period of V of T so V of T starts up here. I go over one period until it looks the same again. I call the length of this period T. This average is going to be 1 over T times the integral from 0 to T 
of v squared dt. Okay, so again, what I'm doing here is I'm finding the area under the v squared waveform between 0 and t, and then just dividing it by the distance that I've integrated over, and that gives me, again, this average value. Um, the same formula applies here, 1 over t, integral 0 to t, v squared of t dt. So in this case, I would have t, and this is the area that I get, and I divide by t, and that gives me the average. Okay, so um, using this idea, I can say that the average power is going to be this average v squared, for example, so it's going to be 1 over t, integral from 0 to t, v squared t dt, divided by r, or I can do a similar thing with current, where instead of I average the current and then multiply by r. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to express this average in terms of an effective voltage so that I can treat things um, like I have just a, a voltage that I've obtained using DC steady state analysis. So my goal would be able to define an effective voltage that if I square it and divide it by R, I get the same thing as I would get when I do this whole integral and average stuff. So you can see then, for this to be true, I need the effective voltage uh, squared to be equal to this integral, which then tells me that the effective voltage is the square root of this interval. Okay, so basically this effective voltage is going to be the square root of my average voltage with the idea that if I take this guy and square it, so I take that value and square it, then I get this guy. Okay, and again, that allows me to write my power equations uh, for... Uh, time varying signals in the same way that I would do them for DC signals. This effective voltage has a name. It's called a root mean square, or RMS for short. This is an RMS voltage, and quite often, rather than see it called an effective voltage, you'll actually see it called VRMS. Okay, the root comes from this thing. I'm taking the square root. The mean comes from the fact that I'm averaging. So this whole integral represents the mean. Mean is a fancy way of saying average. And then square comes from the fact that I take my original signal and square it. Okay. So if you remember RMS and what that means, that actually tells you how to compute an RMS voltage or current. You take the voltage or current, you square it, you take the average over one period, and then you take the square root. Okay, and similarly, I won't go through any derivations, but I can say that average power, uh, where can I tuck this away? We'll put it right here, is an effective current squared times R, where the effective current would be the RMS value of the current, so it's the square root of 1 over T, integral from 0 to T, I squared T dt. Okay, so that defines uh, RMS values. Now, it turns out that for cosines and sines, uh, things work out to be uh, pretty pretty easy in the following sense. So this point here, this value here, is the peak value of my 
sinusoid. So I might call this value here V sub P. <coughs> Excuse me. If I then square it, I have a peak value here that's going to be V sub P squared. And then when I average it, this guy ends up being 1 half V sub P squared. So for a cosine, the um, mean square value of the, of the cosine waveform is 1 half times its peak value squared. And so when I then compute a uh, uh, RMS voltage here, so we have VRMS, well, it's going to be the square root of this thing, which is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 times V sub P. So I get the RMS voltage by taking the peak voltage and dividing by the square root of 2. And I can find uh, RMS current the same way. So for sinusoids, and this is what you typically end up doing, well, if you're doing AC steady state analysis, you're always dealing with sinusoids. The RMS voltage is just the square, 1 over the square root of 2 times the peak voltage. And sometimes uh, this can make a difference. When you buy a, a cheap multimeter, uh, quite often it says it will compute RMS values. And so you hook it up to an AC signal and you get an actual correct RMS value. You hook it up to a square wave like this and you get a value that is not correct. And in fact, what it's doing is it's taking the peak voltage value, squaring it, and dividing by the square root of 2. And for this waveform, the squared uh, pulse, that, whoops, make a mess here, uh, that may or may not be related to the actual RMS value. So if you want to measure RMS values, make sure your meter is capable of measuring true RMS values. And uh, unfortunately, the more, the more expensive a meter is, the more likely it is to measure true RMS values. OK, so having talked about it, let's do a very quick example. Suppose I have a source connected to a resistor, and this resistor is modeling a 100-watt light bulb. OK, and this source if we live in the United States, uh, would have a, an effective voltage or an RMS voltage of 120 volts. What that means is the actual voltage here is 170 volts times a cosine 377t, where 377 is a pretty good approximation to 2 pi times 60. Okay, so again, this is an effective value. It's equal to this voltage divided by the square root of 2. And I want to find the effective current, or the RMS current, that is going to be uh, going through my light bulb. So I know that my light bulb is dissipating 100 watts. So I have 100 watts is equal to 120 volts. This is my effective, or RMS voltage, times my effective, or um, RMS current, which I work out then to be uh, the effective current is 0.833 amps. Okay, so what this says is um, in a 100 watt light bulb, the average current or the effective current is 0.833 amps. The actual current is going to be sinusoidal and it will have a peak voltage that's the square root of 2 times this which turns out to be 1.18 amps cosine 377t. Okay, So there you have it. We've introduced the idea of RMS voltage and current. We've explained why it's defined the way it is. And then we've shown that for sinusoids, RMS voltage and current are, uh, you get an RMS voltage or current by taking the peak voltage or current and dividing by the square root of 2. And we've done an example that shows how this is used. So hopefully you found this useful.